A new report is warning parents about what it calls B inflation. The group Learning Heroes says nearly 80% of families report their kids getting B's or better, yet only half of students are at grade level. The report suggests parents should look beyond the grades and says an over reliance on report cards could lead kids astray. Baron Whited, a counselor at Agora Cyber Charter School, is back to offer advice to parents. I'm so glad that you're here to talk about this. Thank you this. for having me. Because, you know, I think as parents, too, we, we look at this report card and we come to rely on it as a source Absolutely. of good information like our kids are doing okay. Right. Right? Right. And, and this is really saying look beyond the grades. Yeah, absolutely. And when you get the report card, there's a couple things you should look at. Okay. First, look at the teacher comments that are on the side. Because, uh, you know, if they do get an A, teacher might say, well, you know, they did really well. But there might be something in there that they're giving you an indicator. Hey, they have these strengths, but this is where they need the additional support in. And so what kind of comments? I mean, is that the kind of thing that you should look for that could raise a flag? For yeah, I mean, they only have a small area to put that in. Right. But you can obviously ask the teacher for more you know, elaboration on it. But that's the first thing you want to look at. I think what's complicated for me is that if the grade reflects a B or higher yeah. or an A, and yet there are comments on the side or they are struggling, how is that all adding up? Yeah. Because to me, it doesn't. Then. So you got to look at what the grade is measuring. There's homework, assignments, projects, right. quizzes, tests. There's also extra credit. A lot of teachers give that. That could make a difference between a B minus and an A minus. So that's something to keep in mind. I was one of those kids that always did the extra credit, right. especially because I struggled in math. So I did that, and I was like, well, what's, what's the problem? I thought you got a, you know, you got no, an A minus. Thinking, yeah. And I said, because I did the extra credit. So you got those extra points, but it didn't mean that you were necessarily where you should be. Exactly. So what should parents do if if they realize that their students, their kids are struggling in certain areas. So look at the local assessments that the school district gives the student, because they always measure math, reading, science. Look at that, but ask the school, you know, can you give me like an interpretation of what these assessments mean and where the strengths are, where the weaknesses are? Look at the state assessments, the PSSAs and the Keystones, which are given in the uh, spring. And the, t the parents usually get those results sometime the end of summer, early part of fall. Look at what they're saying. So if the student is struggling, ask the teacher, you know, what can I do to help? Maybe they're having trouble with reading comprehension. Mm. The uh, flip side of this is, what if your student is not feeling challenged enough. I was going to ask you about this because, yeah. you know, if they have straight A's or they're doing really well, yeah. there could be this other sign of it that they actually need more. Yeah, right? so you might want to ask the teacher, could you give them enrichment activities? Okay. If you're seeing it's just not, they're just not feeling challenged, talk about the next school year where, you know, maybe they have biology. Maybe they need to go to honors chemistry for the following year. Mm -hmm. Ask the teacher for a recommendation, the school counselor, because that kind of sets that bar. They're, they're having more projects with students, but they're also doing individualized work. Um, this year is a really cool year for my oldest. She's in fourth grade and her teacher is all about independence. She wants yeah. the kids to really be independent when it comes to their homework and their projects yeah. and really take ownership over that. The other side of it though is in previous years, we've been very hands-on with homework yeah. and she comes home and it's done. Yeah. So when you're when you're in that in between, how do you stay on top of homework and assignments while still allowing them that independence to work? So I always say pay attention because a lot of you can see a lot of this stuff online, the yeah. grade books. See what the teachers are doing. See you know when assignments are due, but also seeing what they're being measured on. And I always say this to parents: ask the student what are, what are they learning, mm -hmm. why do they think it's important, and how do they know they've mastered the material. It's, it's so funny. I mean, we, we she had a book report this year, and yeah. I said, How, "How's the book report coming?" She goes, "Oh, that's done. We turned that in like two weeks ago." Yeah. I was like, "What? You don't even ask us for help? It was so wild." It could you be know? that the teachers are giving more time within to the do. classroom. Yeah. You mentioned state asse assessments and other testing. Yeah. Uh, what kind of insight can you? gain from that and and what should you be looking at in particular when it comes to that well look at the scores you know they have below basic basic proficient advanced but look at what it's measuring because the other thing is what if the student has had a bad day right. they're sick they take the exam i mean it's there's certain sections that are only offered that one day mm -hmm. so know that and say okay well i didn't do well on this state assessment 
but I still have time to do well on the next state assessment. I really want to ask you this next question too, because we never, we were just talking about work-life balance and we never want to be a bother yeah. when it comes to the teachers. We know how busy they are and how yeah. much work they're putting in after hours too. But it is important to stay in regular contact with the teachers. Yes. What's appropriate, what's, an, what's enough, what's not enough? So I always tell parents, ask the teacher, do you prefer email? Do you prefer phone calls? Some teachers like, I want to talk on the phone. Yeah. Other teachers like, could you just send me an email right. and see, and ask them, you know, when is the best time to reach you? I also, we're in the time where the, uh, there's a lot of school districts doing the parent-teacher conferences. Make sure you attend those. Go to them. Because they can help your child so much and help you as a parent. Right. Yeah. Baron, thank you so much. Thank you so Really much. appreciate your insight and yeah, what an absolutely. interesting report coming out about this. Yes. If you're interested in learning more about the Learning Heroes Report or the Agora Cyber Charter School, we're going to have links on our website at kdka.com slash talkpittsburgh. Still to come on the show, whether you're shopping for a coffee lover or a fan of specialty cocktails, curated boxes cover it all. We're taking a look through the perfect holiday gifts when we come back.